Hey, so like most of you out there in YouTube land, I am a huge fan of Coyote Peterson and just the Brave Wilderness YouTube channel in general. And in between, oh, I don't know, my 50th video of watching Coyote Peterson get stung by just the craziest bugs I've ever seen, I noticed something. Man, that's a pretty cool leather bracelet you got there. So for today's video, we are going to do a little experiment and try to recreate the Coyote Peterson leather cuff bracelet as accurately as possible with the materials I have here in my shop. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first step was to do some research. I started at Google Images looking for as many up-close pictures of Coyote Peterson wearing this cuff bracelet as I could find. I came across a couple clear photos of him wearing this bracelet that are definitely gonna help me reverse engineer this design. The good thing about this style leather bracelet is that it's a pretty simple design. It's only leather, rivets, and two buckles. Planning out where the rivets and the straps and the buckles went wasn't too big of a problem. However, I did run into an issue where I couldn't find a clear photo of how far around the actual cuff wrapped around the wrist. So I left the Google images and went back to watching some of the YouTube videos and voila, I found the screenshot I was looking for. Now we can get started. The second step was to do some sketching in my notebook to get some rough dimensions and see what kind of pieces I would need to draft on my computer. Step three was to fire up Adobe Illustrator and draft my templates. I did two prototypes before I landed on these dimensions that I was happy with. Step four was to print the designs out on some heavy cardstock and cut them out to get ready for tracing. The leather we'll be using is some heavyweight, undyed natural vegetable tan leather. Step five is to trace all of the patterns onto the leather. Don't forget to mark those holes. Step six, cut everything out. To make my life easier, I'm cutting one long strip that is a half inch long that I'll be making all of my strap pieces from. Step seven, I'm going to reduce the thickness of these straps just to make it a little bit more comfortable on my wrist. This thickness is fine for the body of the cuff, but the straps should be a little bit thinner. To accomplish this, we are gonna put the strap through a single pass on this skiving machine. There we go, now it's a more suitable thickness for a strap. Step eight, measuring the strap to size and marking all of the holes that will be punched out for rivets. Step nine, time to dye. We're gonna be using a technique called dip dyeing where we create a dye bath full of our dye and slowly dip each piece into the dye so it is fully immersed and covered thoroughly on all sides. And here are our 
newly dyed and dried leather cuff pieces. Next step, step 10, will be to vigorously buff with a microfiber cloth to get any excess dye pigment off the surface, and then to add a layer of Caranuba cream as a protector. Step 11, we have to punch out the many, many holes for all of our rivets and our buckles. Step 12, we need to get rid of that hard square edge by beveling and burnishing to make a nice rounded edge that'll feel comfortable against your skin. Step 13, uh, assembling the buckles. This is where the straps will be locked into place when it's wrapped around your wrist. Step 14, getting anything that needs to be riveted down, ready to roll. I'm going to start with these decorative pieces here and then move on to the straps and the buckles. And step 15, the final step, we're going to cap off the rivets with these burrs and we're going to set them down with our rivet setter. We're going to trim the post and then we are going to peen it down. Okay, so here is a look at our final product. 
Here's the outside. Got the two buckles for the straps, the decoration pieces, and then the two closing straps. And here's the inside. I peened these rivets down pretty far, almost flat. And if I were ever want to wear this for a long period of time, I would probably go even further down, just so you don't feel anything against your skin there. Not too bad. All right, let's try it on. All right, got it on there. These things are a pain in the butt to put on when they're brand new. Okay, well I am pouring sweat and I have little pieces of leather stuck all over me and I can't wait to go home and take a shower. So that means only one thing and that is it is the end of our Coyote Peterson leather cuff bracelet experiment video. If I were to make another one of these, I would do a couple things different. First, I would start with an eight ounce leather, something a little bit thinner. This is a 10 to 12 ounce leather. And if I started with an eight ounce leather, I wouldn't have to uh, shave down the thickness of the straps as much and I think it would just fit on my wrist a little bit nicer. Two, I would source the accurately sized double cap rivets for this size project. I think the double cap rivets make a nicer, more professional looking product and they're 10 times faster to install than the cut and hammer style rivets. And three, if I were going to dye another one, I would wait a little bit longer for the dye to dry. This dye was pretty much dry, but I did struggle with uh, doing the edge work on the smaller straps because they were still a little bit mushy. So it made it a little bit difficult. So next time I would just let it dry for an entire 24 hours or something like that. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like these type of videos, I uh, would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. And if you could like this video, that'd be great. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you.